there are some uh, tricky things to, to, to keep in mind. Um, the wet forest sample, sample is very wet and changes its uh, moisture content very quickly. As soon as you have measured your spectrum with the NIR instrument, it is important to take it to the reference analysis as quick as possible. That means uh, practically that you take the sample from the sample cup and you go and start the pre-drying uh, process to get the dry matter analysis uh, correctly. Because that's where we have the big advantage with NIR. That is that you can measure the dry matter con uh, content very accurately and most often more accurately than with your reference methods. Another thing to think of, if we are now making uh, calibration models on um, wet forage samples, we would most likely want to use them as close as possible to where uh, you actually deal with your forage. And that is, for example, out at the farm. And then it is important to include variations that you don't have in your uh, laboratory, like temperature differences, for example. It can vary a lot out on the farm, from uh, below zero to uh, maybe up to 30, 40 degrees Celsius. So you need to have some kind of temperature, uh, temperature stabilization in your calibration models. And um, we have a concept that is called the rep file concept, which is very good for building, uh, for example, temperature stabilization into the, uh, into the models. It can though be a little bit critical when working with uh, high moisture samples, as uh, the moisture content changes quickly. And the rep file concept builds on that you measure a sample under uh, different conditions, but that the sample, sample doesn't change anything else than the temperature. For example, if you make it on temperature. So maybe including uh, samples of different uh, temperatures into the model uh, is another critical thing to think about. We also have the reference methods, of course, um, using um, established reference methods, standardized reference methods, and we have a lot of variation in the forage analysis, a lot of laboratories that are not um, using standardized methods and a lot of different parameters to analyze. So uh, when you make, make up your uh, applications you need to decide which are the parameters that we want to use and make sure that we have a good good reference uh, laboratory uh, building up the calibration models. Now with the new networking tools you can actually do much more of uh, um, surveillance of the, of the instrument, uh, of uh, results produced by the, uh, by the instrument. If, for example, if we are um, um, thinking of having the NIR instruments out on the farms, and these instruments are connected to um, some kind of networking tool, you could of course have a way of distributing calibration models to all the instruments and have some kind of centralized uh, development center for the calibration models. You could also have, for example, nutritionists having access to certain instruments and the results from certain instruments, which mean that they could take out the results from a particular farm, look on these results and make the calculations necessary for how the farmer should feed his cows, for example. So he doesn't really need to go out to the farm and, uh, and uh, measure with a portable NIR or anything like that. So that's where I see a big advantage with networking on in the forage applications.